Hello, my beautiful friends. My name is Kim, and I hope you're having a fabulous day today. If you are interested in true crime stories like I am, I hope that you consider hitting that subscribe button. But either way, thanks for being here. Back in April 2012, Mayra Contreras began to feel uneasy after not hearing from her daughter for a couple of days. The two were very close. 31-year-old Arlette lived in the family home from time to time with her two young sons. Worried that something may have happened, Myra called her daughter. Although there was no answer, she soon received a text message from Arla explaining that she and the boys were busy having fun on a family trip. Relieved, Myra thought nothing of it. Not until it was revealed the messages were not written by her daughter. Let's talk about the Contreras family case. Arlette Hernandez Contreras, who was born in 1980, moved to the United States from Mexico with her family in the early 2000s. Other than that, next to nothing is known about Arlette's life. Her hopes and her dreams, her favorite color, what she liked to do, there's just not a lot of information out there. But according to her mother, Myra Contreras said everything changed when Arlette met a man named Cesar Fernandez Lemus in California through an office cleaning business. The relationship between Arlette and Cesar quickly got serious and there was reportedly even talk about marriage. But the pair's love story turned sour soon after Arlette found out that she was pregnant in early 2010. Although Arlette was very discreet and really didn't share her problems, her relationship problems with her family, it was very clear everything wasn't all right when the young woman moved back into her mom's place during the pregnancy. After the birth of her son, Fernando, on December 14, 2010, Arlette returned to Shazer's two-bedroom apartment in Orange County, but the cycle repeated itself when 31-year-old Arlette became pregnant again just months later. Once again, the young mother packed her things and moved in with her mother. The pair's second son, Emmanuel, was born on January 24, 2012. Arlette's mother later shared that the boyfriend didn't show up at the hospital when Arlette was in labor, not the first or the second time. He just wasn't interested. Apparently, the boyfriend, a manager for a commercial cleaning supply company, worked a lot. But he was also known to be extremely cold with the children. Arla eventually returned to Charez with the two young sons around March 2012, hoping things would get better and the four would live together as a family. But sadly, this was never going to happen. Sometime around April 2021, this is a new case, guys, but there's not really a lot of information. But anyways, April 2021, Charez and Arlette were, again, having problems, and she and the children had left the apartment in Orange County. On April 12th, Arlette called both her mother and the police saying that she had attempted to retrieve her belongings from Charzez's flat, but he was preventing her from doing so by changing the locks on the door and not letting her in. However, when officers responded to the call, they were unable to find any of Arlette's belongings inside the apartment. After an argument with her on and off again boyfriend, Arlette took Fernando and Emmanuel and left. That was the last time anyone saw the three. A couple of days later, Myra began to grow concerned. The mother of Arlette began very concerned as she had not heard from her daughter. All of Myra's calls had went unanswered, but she did receive a text message from Arlette explaining everything was fine. Don't worry. I'm just on a family vacation, you know, with my boyfriend and that I'm fighting with and the two boys. Uh, you know, she was a bit confused, but satisfied with the reply, you know, off and on again relationships. You just kind of go with it. You just never know what's going on. So I think that's how she was feeling, but I don't want to put anything into her words. It's the impression she gave. 
A bit confused but satisfied with the reply, Myra went on with her day without worrying too much. It wasn't until the police showed up at her workplace in May that Myra learned something was seriously wrong. While the strange message from Arlette claimed Charez was on a trip with his family, he had still managed to suddenly empty his apartment in Orange County on April 28th. Breaking the lease alone wasn't enough to raise suspicion, but an alarming discovery made by a cleaning crew. When the workers stepped into the apartment, they were greeted by a terrible smell and blood spatters on the walls and on the ceiling. As they noticed bleach stains on the carpet, the cleaning crew pulled it up and uncovered big pools of blood big enough to suggest that the person had bled there was no longer alive. Fearing the worst, the police began searching for the family and were soon able to locate the boyfriend in an office industrial area near John Wayne Airport on May 3rd. But instead of agreeing to speak with the authorities, Charez sped away, causing a high-speed chase on a freeway and only ended after the police used a spike strip. This man is outrageous. Like, um, he, what does he think he's going to get away? After stopping his Nissan 350Z near the San Clemente Border Patrol checkpoint, Charez sat in his car for half an hour before he was finally detained. There was no doubt in anyone's mind this man knew what had happened to his girlfriend and his two sons. But as Charez refused to tell where the family was, the investigators continued their search by contacting neighbor, neighboring counties. Soon, it was learned Arlette Hernandez Contreras was no longer missing. About a week before Charez's arrest on April 25th, workers in an industrial area in La Puente discovered a badly decomposed body of a Hispanic woman in the gutter covered by a tarp. An autopsy determined that the woman had been stabbed 48 times, suggesting a crime of passion. Some had been angry enough to keep stabbing, likely after the victim was already deceased. Due to the lack of identification, the woman laid several days in the Los Angeles County morgue as a Jane Doe. Before it was realized, she matched the description of Arlette Hernandez Contreras. The fingerprints later confirmed the identity. But although the authorities now know the horrifying fate of the young mother, they had not found any signs of the kids. Despite the fact that the boys were still missing, 31-year-old uh, Cesar Fernando Lemus was charged with their murders in addition to the stabbing of his girlfriend. While Charez refused to tell police where he had taken the two boys, the authorities had every reason to believe the boys had also been killed. The authorities continued to search for Fernando and Emmanuel, but all of their efforts, including using cadaver sniffer dogs at the Brea landfill, were in vain. Soon days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into years without the bodies of the two little boys ever being found to this day, in fact. It took over a decade for the triple murder trial to finally start on November 14th, 2022, not that long ago. During his opening statement, he said his defense attorney acknowledged that his client is responsible for the stabbing of the 31-year-old Arlet, but had nothing to do with the death of the two boys. However, it became very clear that that he never wanted to be a father in the first place. According to the deputy district attorney, he allegedly said, quote, I hate her. I wish she did not have those kids. And Arlette is ruining my life. I wish she were gone, unquote. During the trial, he was described as a womanizer who routinely cheated on women in his life and lied about having children. Many of the arguments between the pair were caused um, 
because of infidelity and the fact that Arlet often showed up when he was with other women to confront him. The defense attorney claimed that Arlet was increasingly disturbed and obsessed with Shara's and didn't accept he didn't want to be with her anymore. The defense also told the jury that Arlette had allegedly threatened to hurt herself or her children um, and that was ultimately followed through with those threats and it resulted in her own death. So in other words, he is saying that she killed the kids and so then he killed her. Who does that sound like? Chris Watts. Chris Watts did that. Yeah, yeah. Didn't work for him either. But if that was the truth, why hadn't he told them where the bodies were, where the boys were? In turn, the prosecution believed the murders were a result of an increasingly selfish man attempts to be free of responsibilities. That's all it was. He just didn't want any of the responsibility. He had already taken her out. That leaves the two boys. Well, he doesn't want to take care of them, so I'm just going to get rid of them. He's, he's, a, he's clearly a very disturbed person. We have enough to file the case and proceed on the case, but the investigation is continuing at this point. Um, it could be a potential motive, absolutely. I didn't hear that possible motive was child support. Child support. And that goes for uh, paying child support as well. He didn't want to pay child support and he made that very clear. Charez killed the entire family and threw them away like trash. Arlette and little Fernando and Emmanuel did not deserve to have their lives so violently snuffed out by someone who cared only about himself and was willing to kill everyone and anyone who got in his way, including his own sons. According to the prosecution, Arlette and her sons were murdered between April 13th or 14th. This was based on the fact that on the night of April 14th, Charez called his other girlfriend saying he had injured his hand in a fight. He later checked into a hospital and received treatment using another person's name. Charez's defense claimed the wound was a result of him grabbing a knife in Arlette's hand while the prosecution believed he hurt himself while stabbing her 48 times. Disturbingly, the prosecution told the jury that Charez most likely left Arlette's body on his apartment balcony for 10 days before disposing of it in the known trash dumping site. The forensic evidence, including the blood, provided that Arlette died inside the flat, inside of the apartment, but the prosecution didn't mention what they believed happened to Fernando and Emmanuel. While as often on, again, girlfriend's body lay in the balcony closet, Charez continued his life as if nothing had happened. He goes to dinner, he rents limos, he goes to dance clubs, he went to an improv, he goes to birthday parties, hosts some friends over at his place. Creepy. During this time, Charis has also seen getting rid of children's clothing, a high chair and strollers, in addition to moving furniture around in his apartment and in, and hiring a friend to clean up blood stains. And when the mom of Arlette began calling her daughter's phone, it was Charez who texted her back impersonating Arlette. Charez has his girlfriend's phone with him at the time of his arrest. Finally, on April 24th, Charez used a rented U-Haul to move at least Arlette's body, which was placed into a large chest to the industrial area in the Los Angeles County. Afterward, Charis drove another 100 miles. GPS tracking shows he went up to the mountains. While it's possible this is when Charez disposed of the bodies of his two sons, Fernando and Emmanuel, but they still remain missing. But despite the fact we do not know for sure what happened to the boys, it took the jury only three hours on December 14th, 2022, to find 42-year-old Charez Fernando Limas guilty of all three murders. 31-year-old Arlette Hernandez, Contreras, 16-month-old Fernando Hernandez Limas, and 3-month-old 
Emmanuel Hernandez Lemus. The sentencing hearing is scheduled for January 3rd, 2023, with Shara's facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. After 10 years of waiting, Arlette's family has finally received justice, but there will not be real closure before Fernando and Emmanuel have been brought home. Unfortunately, after a decade of silence, it is possible Shara's Fernando Lemus will never reveal what he had done to his sons and where they are. Let's leave a purple heart for this family who have to go with the unknown and our victims in this case. It's, it's just a devastating, devastating case. And I wish, he's not going to, it's been 10 years, but I really wish that he would reveal where the boys are just so they could the family could have some closure and they could go to their finally final resting place but that's about everything for this case um i just wanted a quick note i have extended i have expanded my channel memberships to four different tiers and benefits i want to try to build more of a community over here check it out if this is something that would interest you then please do. I also have started a TikTok and I have a podcast. I'll link all that down in the description box. What else? What else? What else? Yeah, I think that's it. With that, thanks to all my channel members and Patreons who continue to support me. Their names are on the screen. If you would like early access to new videos and decide the cases to cover next, you can do so by clicking the join button from your desktop, or there is a video in the description box on how to do it from your phone. Well, if you guys have made it to the end, you guys are rock stars, and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my crimey cases playlist for you to check out. Stay safe, my loves, and remember, if you see something, say something. Bye.